in this video we're looking at how to use a graphing calculator to form a confidence interval for the mean difference for the match paired t-test. Okay, so remember when you're doing the mean difference problems, you're going to be doing a subtraction of these two sets of data here. And the data is dependent because usually these measurements are taken on the same from taken from the same subject. All right, so let's look at this problem and see if it fits that mold. It says a researcher suspects that men, if given the chance, would lie about their heights. She suspects that they would try to say they are taller than they really are. To test this, the researcher first asks the male subjects to report their heights, and then she actually measures them. The subjects do not know they will be measured. Use the data below to construct a 95% confidence interval for the true mean difference between measured heights and reported heights. Is zero in the interval? If so, what does this tell us? All right, so let's work this out using the calculator. We're going to have to enter all this data into the calculator. So to do that, we're going to press STAT. And then we have EDIT as our first option. We're going to hit ENTER after that. So the keystrokes are STAT and then ENTER. And that takes you into the list. Now, in list one and two, you see I already have data. And what I've actually already done is I went in and I typed all this data inside the list for us already to save us some time. If you want to see how that's done in an actual problem, you can look at the video for the matched paired t-test video. I did that already for that video. And you can see me type in all the data. Although, of course, it's very easy. You would just type in, say, 68, right? And then hit enter, and it goes into that spot, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so L1 and L2 are already filled up. That's with reported heights and measured heights in L2. Now what we want to do is I want to get the difference of these two rows of data, and I'm going to store that difference into L3. The most convenient way to do this is to actually get out of this screen. So we're going to hit second quit. So second quit. And once I get out of the screen, I'm actually going to tell it to do L1 minus L2. The way I do that is I'm going to get the little L1 that's above the one key by hitting second and number one, that gives me L1, then minus, second, and then number two, that gives me L2. And then I hit enter. And when I do that, I have a bunch of numbers. Those numbers are the differences between L1 and L2. Now I'm gonna store that into a list called list three. So under three, but I hit the second first. So I hit second and then number three, and it tells me answer stored into L3. I'll hit enter, and those answers are now in my calculator in list three. I can confirm that by pressing the stat key, hitting enter again to look at the edit menu, right? And when I go there, I see that L3 indeed contains all the values I just put there. Okay, good. Now at that point, what we wanna do is to run the confidence interval procedure. So we're gonna hit the stat key one more time. So press stat, and you're gonna arrow over to where you see the test menu. Now we're going to be constructing a t interval because remember once you subtract and do all the differences all you have to do is conduct a t interval or if you're doing a hypothesis test you just do the t test so that's what's nice about this match paired procedure you basically reduce everything down to a simple t test or t interval so for this problem we're going to arrow down to where we see option for t interval so i arrow down to t interval and i hit enter and when i do that it says input and it's flashing on data it could be highlighted to stats, but we want to make sure it's on data for these problems because we actually have our data stored in a list. So go to data, hit enter to confirm that, and then arrow down to where it says list. Now mine is saying list three already, and that's good because that's where the data is stored. If yours doesn't say list three, you're gonna hit second and the option three, and that will put list three in that position. Then you arrow down to where it says frequency, and you should leave that as a one. If it isn't a one, you should put a one there. That's just telling the calculator that each of those values is only gonna be represented once, right? And then arrow down to where it says confidence level. Now in this case, we're looking at a 95% confidence interval, so we're gonna do 0.95. Come down after that, hit calculate, and in just a moment it'll give us our t interval. Then from there, once we have the t interval, we'll answer this question, is zero in the interval? So let's look at what we got from our calculator. We got negative 3.236 up to positive 1.236. So basically zero is in the interval, and it asks, if so, what does this tell us? Well, remember your calculator won't give you the interpretation, but we can figure that out ourselves. If the interval has zero in it, what it basically means is that there isn't a significant difference between the reported height and the measured heights. The reason why is because since zero is in that interval, it's a possible candidate for the true mean difference. And if zero was the true mean difference, it would basically be saying that uh, there's no difference between the reported height and the measured height. So this data isn't strong enough to conclude that there is a difference. All right, and the other thing the calculator gives you, if you notice, it gives you the X bar. That's the X bar for the differences. 
and the SX, which is the standard deviation for the differences. So it's actually really helpful.